Hey folks, uh, I just worked out a cool way of making leather pouches inside of Blender really easy and uh, really modifiable, and I wanted to show you what I came up with. So in uh, standard Blender, I have a couple add-ons added in, but I'll let you know which ones they are as I use them. I don't really use that much special stuff in here. Like most things, I start with the cube, much like the standard cube that I we usually obliterate. And I just try to get it into position using scaling. So hitting S and like X or Z, or whatever combination of numbers I need to get it to get the general shape. So just kind of forming it up as best I can, trying to hit the proportions. As soon as I'm done with that, it's really important to hit Control A, and I, because it's freezing all of my transforms as we knew it from Maya. So what I want to do is split this into two parts. Essentially, there's the top of the pouch, which folds and wraps over, and then the bottom part of the pouch, which curves up over the top. So um, before I do that, I'm going to mirror everything. I use a plugin here. Let's turn off my normals. I use a plugin. Um, you can find it called Auto Mirror. It's in the standard, um, like in your edit preferences. It's right in here in, on like add ons. And so I use that one a lot. And I'm going to do Auto Mirror and X. And it just mirrors it for me, creates it, splits it, divides the other half. It's a very quick, convenient way to start these things off. So what I want to do is split the bottom here up to about there. Control E brings up all my edge stuff. I can do edge split. And then three will let me select faces. L lets me select all the connected faces. And then P lets me separate them. In this case, I can do it by loose parts or I'm gonna do by selection. So I have the top and the bottom piece. So I'm gonna work on just the top piece at once. So I can do slash on my numpad which is like this little guy over here, which will give me isolate select for just this thing. And uh, I wanna create uh, a seam, a split along here, because into the pouches, they have that little, there's that little split that you should be able to see. Um, it's a little hard to see in here, but it's in my pure F board, so there should be a little seam there. Get that back. So before I make the seam running along here, I actually take this face and hit I. And uh, if you get this, all you have to do is hit B and it changes the border. So I'm just creating a little run along here so that I can take two and two and I can control, control E and do an edge split. So what that means now is these are separated from each other because then I want it to like fold over the top just like this. And the last thing I wanna do is get that little, I need a, an area to hook onto so there's enough room for my pouch to attach to its backside. So usually they're done like this, like it's a whole piece that's like unfit. We can imagine how it would be if it was unfolded flat. And before I add, I can just come in and add some solidity to it, which is what we're eventually gonna do. But I don't wanna do that yet. First, um, I'm going to use a modifier in here for Bevel. Bevel's my favorite modifier, especially in this program. I use it for like everything. I'm gonna turn on wireframe. You can find that up here. I've also set it um, to my quick favorites. You can just right click it and that means if I hit Q, wireframe comes up. And I, I use a couple things in here that I use pretty frequently. So we can see now, if I go into the parameters for this, I'm gonna leave it segment of one. I can control how big that offset is, but it automatically clamps it. I'm just gonna let it go full offset till it clamps. And that's gonna work pretty well for my purposes here. But I only wanna set it by angle so I don't want to do it everywhere so I don't want to do it along the middle so something like this is going to work pretty well that's yeah, not too bad so kind of like create this nice little edge now if I take this and I do my solidify we can see it's creating that little seam and that little thickness running along the whole thing I think these here, I could also, you know, I could stand to like tighten them up or maybe I just play with my offset a little bit to reduce down, wrong way. Yeah, something like, let's do about there. Maybe a little higher to get all those. Maybe I'll set this one to an offset of two. Has enough curvature to it, but. Now, if I take the solidify, you can see all the pieces are in here and I can add another bevel. And this one is just the bevel that's gonna be preparing me for my subdivision. So I set the segments to two, profile up to one, so it stays flat on the surface. And you can see now 
Um, again, I'm gonna do it by angle, it's really important. But if I do it too low an angle, it's gonna create sharp seams. And I want this to be rounded. I have to set that angle limit up higher. Usually as you start to approach 60, it gets a little bit closer. So sometimes I even just jump this straight to like 30 and 60 degrees are two of my most commonly used angles for this. And now if I go to add modifier, subdivision surface, add it to a two and let's turn off wireframe, right click to shade smooth. I have my whole object, but what's really cool, if I check all of these little boxes, these are the ones that let me, um, this is edit mode, whether it's on an edit mode or not. So in object mode here, I see the final result. All I have to do is press tab and I see edit mode and that's it for the model. Like really simple. Anytime I wanna change, you know, the scale or size of something, it's really easy to do. And so I could take that and now let's make the other back half, the other piece. So again, I hit that, um, that slash button, that backslash button to look at just this one piece. And I'm gonna do the same thing for here. Um, so I'll start building out some of the shape, like so. Uh, but I needed to do a couple things differently. So for one, I'm gonna need it to jump up a little bit and then extrude to come down for the little, the little clasp, the little strap over the top. I can extrude this. Uh, I'm actually gonna extrude this straight out this way and then extrude this way because I need gaps running both ways for these. This is kind of a little clip that helps conform the top, helps make it more of a watertight seal along the top by still being out of a single piece of leather. So I'm not worried too much about it being precise right now. I just want my main shapes. I'm even gonna lift this up a little bit, give a little room for this. And then I need that little backside where the bottom pieces are gonna connect, just like I made for the top part. So just kind of double checking it, you can see how this is gonna connect to all of that. So what I can do with this now is uh, add my modifier so I can do my little bevel. And this is just gonna bevel only the angles that I want is the idea. And I got a couple of little things that I'm fighting with here. So let's turn on my wireframe. You can see if it's too aggressive on this bevel. It's gonna mark things I don't want. And uh, I also don't want some of these angles in here. So if I set this angle up a little higher, and actually I'm gonna make remove this angle from the equation just by G, Shift, Z, moving along this axis. So I can kind of manually create that bevel for me and it won't even try to add it. That way I can control this little offset here and along the bottom. Then I can do my solidify. And you know, I want this instead of going down, I kind of want it moving the other direction because if we bring this back, we can see that if we move it uh, negative like that other one did, it's gonna intercept. But if I move this one to the positive instead, uh, it's just gonna move it out in the same direction. And so it actually makes it easier for me to offset where things go. So to, to fiddle with all of this, I'm gonna turn on um, Alt-Z, which is gonna give me my little high view. And then I can just take three here to move this. I can hit G to move it up. Middle click. And I can snap into some stuff. I'm gonna turn off a line rotation to target here. So I can just get the tops of this maybe a little bit more over. And at any time I can hit tab to see how it's going. So let's take these lower them down in the z-axis maybe by about there tab and that's looking pretty good so it does look a little messy in here and i've got some extra edges i can always see how it's going to go but i have a feeling i'm going to need to throw another modifier in there so i'm going to try the same thing i did before let's do a bevel let's make sure we set it to two segments Profile all the way up to one. And I'm gonna set it by angle and set this a little, a little higher. So it only gets kind of these outside faces.
definitely having a hard time getting anywhere, like getting close enough to what I need. It's flipping off quite a few things. So before I throw this battle in, I'm going to put in a weld modifier, which is basically like the merge tool. Um, and this will let me, let's turn that off. Set my distance and sort of flip together maybe a couple of these guys between my bevel offset, maybe. Yeah, right about there. So playing with the two, I want this curve to come up, this these faces to come up and around like that. And then I'm welding them together. And now this is giving me a much better, much more easy to control results with my offset here. I'm holding shift, which lets me control much easier. Like, so if I hold shift, I make smaller incremental changes. So it makes it easier to kind of fine tune some of these uh, settings. There, right about there is probably pretty good. And then add modifier, subdivision surface, set it to two. And turn off wireframe. Make it smooth. Sometimes too, if you get like weird editings or settings or things you can't quite control, you turn it on auto smooth and you set it all the way up to 180. It helps with some of those um, little areas. But I expect from my concept, there's quite a lot of pinching in a lot of areas because it really is a lot of like overlapping shapes. So I've come to come to expect that because it should be like kind of a corner that's trying to wrap over the surface that's pinching in. So I can even take these and shift them over a little bit. Because it's kind of like, that's what it should more or less look like. I'm gonna hit one and use this to sort of curve this in a little bit. Shift Z, not Shift Z. So I hit this, I hit G to go to grab. I hit Shift Z, to move it like so. It's just gonna help me turn this little corner but it's beveling it here. There we go. Just get it right about 60. Helps me keep that nice and smooth. So now I can bring this back. And as a last step, I can take these faces and lower them down into the surface just to help get that a little bend. And now that I can see both parts, I can adjust them to each other. I can make sure that I move this out and use that snapping by holding control. And I can take the on this piece, this back side. Shift it back like this. Should be a little bit more overlap in there. And then to make these little buttons, um, oh yeah, to get this kind of hourglass shape in it, after all of this, uh, I can just use a lattice. So Control A. And this little lattice gives me, if I go into my lattice settings, some points to work with. So I can up my V resolution, which is my dimensions in here. Scale it, scale it, just sort of gets it closer to my overall shape. Now if I take this object here and I go to modify, add modifier, and I can add a lattice and choose my lattice object. And now if I modify that lattice object in edit mode, you can see pulling it around and move some of these shapes. If I just click these ones in the middle and then I hit SX to scale it in the X giving me that nice little hourglass shape. And all I have to do is take this one, apply the same modifier to it, lattice, like so. And now I can modify my uh, lattice to my heart's content to get the shape I'm looking for. This way too, if I'm working with this, and I, I can still edit it as a square object, which is a lot easier to work with. So let's, Hide that, and my last step is gonna be add some of these buttons. I made a little button object. It's got its own subdividing sort of little template here. 
but by turning on my vertex to align rotation to target, I can let's turn on wireframe, shift D to duplicate it, and hold control to snap it onto place. If I shift D and hold control, it'll even snap it onto my faces and surfaces like so. That one flipped backwards. Let's E, shift E, move it in this axis. There we go. Shift E, set it on top of this, scale it down a little bit. And turn wireframe up, and there you go. That's how I'm going to make some of my pouches. Now it's ready for sculpting, more details, subdividing or whatever else I want to do with it. So make more videos as I come up with more stuff like this. Thanks for dropping by.